The abduction and brutal murder of a 17-year-old girl in Los Angeles continues to spark outrage and grief. CBS News correspondent Sandra Hughes reports on a young life cut short. Memorials have popped up all over, from the street where she was abducted to an online site with tributes like adorable, fabulous, talented Lily, who lit up the stage and everywhere she was. The 17-year-old, who loved to write and volunteered with the homeless, had a carefree life and bright future until her tragic death. And she was just such a wonderful, vibrant kid. It was a deadly coincidence that Lily Burke crossed paths with the man now charged with her brutal murder. At 3 p.m. last Friday, she was running an errand at Southwestern Law School where her mother taught. Charlie Samuel approached Lily Burke along this tree-lined street just outside the law school. Los Angeles police say they have surveillance video showing Samuel behind the wheel of Burke's black Volvo driving away. 25 minutes later, Burke called her mother on a cell phone asking how to withdraw money from an ATM with a credit card. Minutes later, she calls her dad asking the same question. Burke never revealed in her phone call she was in danger. Police believe it wasn't long after that she was killed because by 4.52 p.m., Samuel allegedly parked the Volvo near Skid Row. Then Samuel wandered off through Skid Row, gripping a beer in a paper bag until he was arrested for public intoxication. This is really a, a parent's worst nightmare. Lily Burke was an only child whose mother says they were best friends. Now she is planning her funeral. Sandra Hughes, CBS News, Los Angeles. And joining us from Los Angeles is Robin Sachs, a child safety expert and former LA County Deputy DA. Good morning. Good morning, Harry, how are you? I'm all right. I, but this story is so troubling to me. You can see this 17-year-old girl with all the best intentions. She has worked with homeless people. She probably feels somewhat confident in the streets she's on. Her, she gets abducted by this guy. She, her mind is racing. How do I get out of this? How do I survive this? He's forcing her to try to get money out of an ATM. She calls home twice. Her parents never had an indication from those calls that she was in trouble. What could she have done? Well, there, there are so many things that we need, can take from this tragedy and hopefully apply to our lives as both as parents and as kids. And one of those lessons that we can learn is to have a code word, a code that would, a word that would symbolize the parent's danger, call 911, a word that would be, uh, be able to flow in the situation, but not a word that would come up for ATM happens to be a great word, in my opinion, because an ATM is a place where no one should make a phone call anyway, as you need your undivided mm -hmm. attention. And if you say, I'm calling from the the ATM, that means there's danger. Um, in Lily Burke's case, I imagine that she, because of her work, she felt, um, com didn't want to appear racist, wanted to appear kind, and probably wanted to give the benefit of the doubt to the stranger. And my mm -hmm. next tip would be to trust our instincts and look at the situations and make, you know, and, and, and be a little bit judgmental when it comes to our safety. Yeah. Could she have done something on the street? I'm sure she's thinking, I got to stay cool, I got to stay cool, I got to stay cool. Should she have cried for help? Should she, what, what might she have done? She was on a public street on a busy thoroughfare. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's really nice to say in retrospect what we could have done to make things different. Everybody acts differently under the circumstances. But if, if one lesson to be learned is to scream fire. People react to the word fire, not to the word help. Really? So you could at least draw some tension. The idea is to do things that will buy time. If you can gouge out the perpetrator with keys or hit someone with an elbow, not to win a fight. The goal isn't to win a fight or to succeed. It's the, the goal is to get a minute, buy a minute of time so you can run and get some help. This guy clearly looked at her as a target. How do you make sure you don't look like a target? The best way not to be a target is to avoid multitasking. Today's teenagers, adults, we all have our hands in cell phones. We have our, uh, you know, Starbucks in hand and doing many things. We need to have our heads up, looking people straight in the eyes, appearing confident. And also in today's economy, I would suggest watching what we're wearing. Watch our jewels, watch our purses, our labels, so that we don't look and appear to be an easy target. Mm, easy takeaway from this in, in conclusion? Yes. All right. Robin Sachs, thank you very, very much for your uh, expertise this morning. Such thank a sad, you. sad story. All right.